So today I would like to talk about language. And I'd like to talk about how language can be used to persuade groups of people through something called context shaping. Now, what is language? Well, language is a formalization of thought. It's a modeling of thought. Well, then what is thought? Well, thought is the awareness of boundary interactions. Now, if thought is the awareness of boundary interactions, then thought is predicated on boundaries, as is language. So what is a boundary? Well, this is easiest to see with nouns because they're obviously available to us and they're probably the simplest distinction to recognize. When I say desk or chair or floor or house, I'm not necessarily saying anything about the object itself, but rather about the boundary that de defines the object as discrete from the rest of the world. So when I say chair, I'm saying this thing inside this boundary is chair and everything outside of it is not. Desk, everything within the boundary that defines the desk, is desk and everything outside of it is not. However, I'm not telling you what the desk is. I'm only making a distinction that the desk is separate from the floor and the chair and the house and everything else. Now, when we use words, we communicate to others the boundary distinctions that we're aware of, at least those that we're aware of to a degree that we can articulate and the sum of these boundaries constitutes the context of our available thought, at least which can be communicated to others. So if I'm aware of the set of words that any group uses, let's say I have access to everybody's phones and I have access to all of the audio that they capture. Well then I could create a set of all of the words spoken across the individuals within that group and then I could organize them by the frequency that they're used. Now some words are going to be used very frequently and those are going to be the words that the boundary distinctions are the tightest regarding generally. That they're the clearest and made the most discreet both to the individuals speaking them and to the rest of the group. right? Their availability and prevalence, to some degree, communicates that to us. But the words that are less commonly spoken, those that exist specifically at the margins, the marginalia, those words, so long as they're not so infrequently used that nobody else in the group understands them, so long as they're just frequently used enough that people understand them, but the boundary is still not made clear enough to the individuals within the group. Maybe a few individuals have a clear sense of the boundaries for those words, but most don't. Those are the words that allow for a certain amount of influence to be imposed upon the group through. Because the group is unaware of the limits of the boundaries that define those words, if I capture those words, and if I can disseminate them and make them common, um, a part of, of common speaking and parlance, then I can also, at the same time, apply boundaries to those words while disseminating them. And since they're at the margins of the, the set of words or the context that the group is able to perceive, then I'm able to reframe the outskirts of that context to push it out a little further. And in doing so, I can reframe all of the previously defined words that are used more frequently and more tightly within the group and within that context. By using those words at the edges and by applying, uh, by applying 
more definite boundaries and implying boundary interactions with those words to other words and other things, then I can reshape the entire frame within which all of the more common things happen. <clears throat> now if I can do that, then I have an opportunity to reframe the relative meanings of words that we already all agree upon, we all recognize and understand, and that we all think we're very aware of the implications of. So I can make a word you're already aware of, that you know and you understand, mean something else by making other words that you're only loosely aware of and not particularly frequently using, more defined in such a way so as to imply a different meaning to those more definite words. This allows me to push the frame out farther on the picture, right? So if I have a painting and I only allow you to see the center four inches square of it, it might mean something very different to you than if I back up and let you see the entirety of the painting. Suddenly, what had looked like a happy picture now becomes a dour one. Or, conversely, what had looked dour now looks rather optimistic. And it's only because I took the edges out farther. So managing the context in which words are used is managing the meaning of those words. And he who controls the frame controls the game. So you always have to be very careful. When you hear words that aren't frequently used suddenly come up in the popular lexicon and start getting used more frequently, and particularly when you see them across media, and you see a particular word used to a great extent across media, that had otherwise been infrequently encountered, you have to ask yourself what other things are being reshaped by the now ubiquitous presence of this once rare thing? How might my framing of other things implicitly change because I'm now aware of this new word and the new boundaries it implies regarding the picture that I've been seeing. So keep that in mind. It's food for thought. It's odd to me that we see these edge interests and concepts bubble up and kind of take over the culture um, at certain times. Because I think there's more to it than people are aware of. And I think that might be the point. Now I don't know that this is the case with this particular example, but it's the first one that comes to mind. But the idea of uh, UFOs or UAPs, whatever people want to call them anymore. Uh, that's always been a fringe topic, generally in my lifetime. But, for whatever reason, in the last three or four years, became quite popular. There might be a whole bunch of reasons for that, um, just in terms of the patterns that we're acting out in society. But, don't be so quick to dismiss the idea that they might actually be introduced to serve a function because they occupy this marginal space. So, 
anyway let me know what you think